Good morning. I've been listening for the past hour or so to my inner voice giving me my message for the day. And I'm going to share that message with you because that's what I feel I'm supposed to be doing. The message from spirit to me, to Ron for today, is it's time to trust yourself. And I have a feeling that that message is for a lot of people that will be listening or watching this video. For a long time, and I will speak in the first person, but I realize that I'm not speaking for myself alone. I'm sure of that. For a long time, I have been plagued by the feeling of, of not being good enough. I have doubted myself. I have met people throughout my life that I thought were more gifted than I was. They could hear God's voice better than I could. They could understand what God was saying for me better than I could understand what God was saying to me for me. In other words, I have disempowered myself time and time and time again throughout my life by not trusting the Spirit of God within me to be capable of leading me in the way that I was supposed to go. You see, this mystic path is one that we keep trying to talk ourselves out of, and I, I, I forgive me for saying we again. It's one that I have tried to talk myself out of again and again. <sighs> because I didn't have confidence that God was really in me. I would pay attention to the things that were happening in my life, and I would be so easily sidetracked. Fear would come up, doubt would come up, anxieties would come up, disappointments would happen, and I would simply deny myself again and again and again. And I used to think that that self-denial was part of the path. Part of what I was required to do. God had called on me to deny myself. What I've been listening to this morning in my own heart is that that's not at all what God is trying to get me to do. God was trying to get me all along to stand in my own power to stand in my own grace, to stand in my own love, not love that comes from Jesus or Buddha or somebody else, not, not trusting in the word of God that came to some prophet or to some mystic or seer in a past generation, but to trust the living God right now, today, in my own heart, in my own life, trusting my gut, learning to listen to the still small voice within me and let it speak and heed its words. This is what living by faith is all about. It, when, you, when you are trusting in the Bible, for example, and I'm again jumping into you, but so many of my brothers and sisters are in this place right now. You're trusting, you, you're wanting to please God, you're wanting to serve God, and you're believing that you, that you alone are insufficient and inadequate to hear the voice of God for you, for your own life. And I'm, I'm realizing that when I have done this, I have shortchanged not only myself, but I have minimized God in me. And when I minimize God in me, I minimize God in my life that, that ripples out to everything else and to everyone else around me. I'm giving people permission to doubt. And I give myself permission to doubt. But it weakens me when I do.
That voice within me today is saying, Ron, I've always led you. I've always led you, but you didn't trust your own guidance. You didn't trust me. And so I kept bringing things faithfully into your life to see where you wanted to put your focus. And so many times you've lost your focus. You've turned away from what your own, the Holy Spirit within you, what, what that spirit was saying within you. It's not something foreign to you. It is you. It is you. You are your own guidance system. You are connected with the infinite, with the eternal, right now, today, right now. You don't have to get it from some guru. You don't have to get it from me. Do you hear me? You don't have to get it from me. I am not your guru. I am not your teacher. I'm merely a voice speaking truth to you to bear witness with the truth that is already being spoken in your own heart, in your own mind, in your own soul, in your own gut. Your body knows the truth and your body doesn't lie. How many of you are aware of kinesiology or muscle testing where you ask your body questions and your body responds with either weakness or strength. Weakness being something that isn't true for you and strength being something that is. I remember when I had a guest healer at my home for a week a few years back and as she was getting ready to leave she asked me if I ever wore a cross. And I said, yes, I used to. I used to wear a cross all the time. And she asked me if I would get it. And I said, sure. And I went and I got one of the crosses that I used to wear most of the time. And I held it next to my heart as she instructed. And I put out my right arm. And she tried to push my right arm down. She used two fingers and easily pushed my arm down, easily. And then she gave me an ink and cross that I usually always wear. But when I got up this morning, I just put my robe on and I didn't put that ink and cross on, which has geo uh, sacred geometry or, or geometric symbols on it, it's just triangles and circles and squares. And I wear that all the time, but I held that next to my left heart. My left heart. <laughs> I held that next to my heart and I put with my with my left hand. And I put my right arm out and she practically hung on my arm. There was so much strength. My body was telling me, this is a symbol that's more powerful to you than the cross was or is at that time. And I don't do that probably enough. But it's not really the muscle testing. That's again, that's just a tool that is provided because our bodies know the truth. We've put down a spiritual on this spiritual journey that we've gone through, we've had a strong tendency, I've had a strong tendency to disregard the body, to not trust the body. But the body has all the, all the wisdom stored in our very cells, in our very DNA. They are transmitters receivers. Our DNA are tr is a transmitter receiver. It's a receptacle for the Holy Spirit, but we don't trust it. I haven't trusted it. And Spirit saying, Ron, it's time to start trusting in what I've given you. It's time to start knowing that I am leading you into all truth. This is your path. This is your time to shine. And I'm saying that from me to you, but you need to hear it in your heart, in your mind, in your soul, in your life. You need to stay focused on the reality, not a make-believe dream 
or something like that, but the reality that God is in you as you. And you need to trust that and to know that and to live from that place because that's where we're going to transform the world in this ninth wave of the evolution of consciousness. This is how we wake up. This is how we empower ourselves. This is how we stand in truth that is unshakable and let our light shine. We've come here for this time. We are the ones we've been waiting for. You've heard it again and again and again, and so have I, and it's true. We are the ones. Yes, we have extraterrestrial or angelic brothers and sisters, beings from apparently other realms. I say apparently because nothing is what it really appears to be. We have them here to help us. But the God Spirit, the Christ Spirit, the Buddha Spirit, the Divine Spirit that permeates all of life is in you. It's beyond all of the excuses you have used and I have used to accept our weakness, to accept less than what we are. Okay. I read a book once called Mr. God, this is Anna, and it was about a little girl lived in England, in London, England, during the time just after the Second World War. Maybe it was even during the war. I'm, I'm not 100% sure of the time. But she went, to a, she went to Sunday school. And she came back. And she says, I'm not going anymore. She told her friend Finn. This is a seven-year-old girl, I believe. I'm not going anymore. Why aren't you going? He asked her, because the teacher's afraid. She makes people little because she doesn't see how big Mr. God is, and I'm totally paraphrasing it. But we do not trust ourselves because we do not trust. We do not see how big God is, what we call God. We do not see how immense and how powerful and how all permeating God is. And we can never rise above our concept of the divine. But I'm telling you and I'm sharing with you what my own guide, guidance and my spirit has been saying to me. I can do all things through the divine in me, as me. It's not somewhere out there. It's not buried in a book. It's not in a historical figure or a mythological figure that lived sometime in the past or is coming sometime in the future. It is here, right now, as me, as you, and today is our day. This is the time of the awakening. This is the time when we stand in our power, the power of our love and our willingness to see the divine in everything, in everyone, and to love as God loves without any conditions, just because, just because. You and I are worth it this morning. We are worth God's investment of infinite love that is shed abroad in our hearts, that manifests in our very minds and hearts and souls and bodies. It's a beautiful thing. I love you this morning just the way you are. And I invite you, as I've been invited, to trust yourself. Namaste.